live and recording. Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Tim Hess. I'm here with our panelist, uh, Dr. Gary Hayamoto, and our Executive Director of the Washington Academy of General Dentistry, Valerie Bartoli. Uh, we appreciate you joining us for the Washington Academy of General Dentistry Stay Home, Stay Healthy CE webinar series. This uh, series is all free CE. It's available to dentists, assistants, hygienists, front desk, whoever wants to attend. You've heard the AGD in the title there, but you do not need to be an AGD member to receive CE credit. Um, CE credit will be arriving from the University of Washington School of Dentistry CE uh, department, and we appreciate them for uh, handling that for us. You will receive your CE credits within a couple of days at the uh, email address you registered at. So please, uh, you'll get a PDF, save that PDF just in case there's problems down the road. AGD members, as always, we will re be reporting your CE credits directly to the Academy of General Dentistry, and those should show up on your transcripts within two to four weeks. So don't be looking for them right away. I uh, want to thank our sponsors, uh, as I mentioned already, the University of Washington School of Dentistry CE Department, the King County Dental Society, Pierce County Dental Society, Snohomish County Dental Society, the Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry and Prostodontics, uh, Comet USA, and Patterson are all sponsors on these uh, webinars. Uh, you'll see there's flyers going by with QR codes. You can use those QR codes to register for upcoming webinars. Some of those uh, webinars that you see go by here have already occurred, but you can access those webinars on YouTube at Washington Academy of General dentistry. Uh, please, if you go to that uh, YouTube page, uh, remember to uh, like, subscribe, and uh, ring the bell there so you'll be updated every time a new webinar uh, from the Washington Academy of General Dentistry goes up on that uh, platform. A, uh, we've added some other speakers uh, here and you'll see the QR codes are not up yet. The registration information is not yet on WashingtonAGD.org, but as it becomes available, um, we will be getting it out on our Facebook uh, platform. That's probably the best way to keep up to date uh, to see what upcoming webinars are going to occur because we can get that information out faster than changing our web page. Uh, keep in mind May 7th is Card P Day, so Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry and Prostodontics. We've got three speakers, uh, Drs. Parlett, Douglas, and Tester that are going to be presenting. We're also going to be featuring on May 4th the International Academy of Nathology. Three speakers will be available there, and once we uh, get their names, uh, we'll get those up on our website. Hey, students, uh, UW uh, students that are joining us today, don't forget Saturday, August 15th is our Crown Prep 101 from analog to digital. Uh, young dentists uh, that are out practicing may want to join us for that. So thank you again for everybody that joined us with uh, Dr. Michael Fling this morning. Uh, very gracious of him to offer to do another webinar for us. Uh, we will try and figure out a date and get that on the books as soon as possible. I know you had a ton of questions uh, regarding his uh, shell provisional technique and he will go through that. Uh, looking at our numbers right now, uh, we're ticking up steadily here. So we'll just give a couple more minutes. Uh, some people are new to the Zoom format. So navigating between the uh, URL link, getting into Zoom, installing, et cetera, takes a little bit of time. Uh, you can't hurt this interface. You're not going to crash the webinar on our side, so play around with your controls. Uh, you can control speaker view, gallery view, et cetera. Um, today, we'd like you to use the Q&A function. You'll find that down on your taskbar there. And you can, um, if you have a question for Deborah, please type it in there. Um, before you type a new question in, take a look at what questions are being asked. And if there's a question that is similar to yours, just upvote it. So just select on the thumbs up and that way 
uh, we won't have 70 questions that we need to uh, try and get through at the end. Uh, Deborah has been very, very gracious to, to uh, donate her time and her expertise. She's going to be spending an hour and a half or so going through her presentation, and then we'll have about half an hour for Q&A. So um, looking forward to what she has to say. She said she's already updated this uh, presentation this morning again. So things are changing fast. Um, you know, and Deborah has been such a, a great supporter of the AGD over the years, and uh, we're just so pleased to have her. Uh, she was supposed to be out at the PNDC, but um, I guess that's going to happen next year. All right, QR codes are going by. Uh, Terry Harris is going to be um, lecturing for us next Tuesday. We have over 1,700 people signed up for that webinar, so I don't know if we'll top out or not. If you're interested in that webinar, get registered now. Penny Reed's going to be joining us next Tuesday as well. And also Dr. Shelburne, which uh, you'll enjoy this presentation, Do Dentistry Not Prison Time. So we're about two minutes after the hour. And with that, I'd just like to thank our sponsors once more for the Washington Academy of General Dentistry Stay Home, Stay Healthy CE series. Those sponsors include the Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry and Prostodontics. They include Comet USA, Patterson Dental. Thank you to the University of Washington School of Dentistry CE Department for handling CE, uh, Pierce County Dental Society, Snohomish County Dental Society, and Seattle King County Dental Society for uh, pushing out our emails and, uh, and sharing our Facebook. We'd also like to welcome our friends in Arkansas, uh, Dr. Ross. We look forward to the Arkansas AGD day you're gonna be putting together for us. You've got a good lineup of speakers. We won't give them away just yet. Uh, and we'd like to thank uh, our AGDs from California and Texas and Nebraska that are joining us. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, I don't wanna eat into Deborah's time too much. Uh, I'd just like to go through her bio here and then I'll stop sharing my screen and we'll get rolling. So Deborah has presented workshops nationally and internationally for numerous study groups and organizations. Deborah is a founding member and served three terms as the president of the National Academy of Dental Management Consultants. She's an active member of the American Dental Assistance Association and a member of the American Academy of Dental Practice Administration and Speakers Consulting Network. She has been reported, repeatedly recognized by Dentistry Today as a leader in continuing dental education and a leader in dental consulting. Deborah is also on the board of the American Dental Association's Dental Practice Management Advisory Board. Because of her contributions to the industry of dentistry, Deborah received the K. Moser Distinguished Service Award given by the American Dental Assistance Association in 2008. It is their highest honor. She has also been chosen as one of the top 25 women in dentistry for 2014 by Dental Products Report. Deborah is the 2015 recipient of the Gordon Christensen Lecturer Recognition Award. Again, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Deborah Engelhart Nash. Thank you again, ma'am, for sharing your time, your expertise. It's so kind of you. It's a pleasure and truly uh, an honor um, for those of you who recognize me. I uh, lived in Seattle, worked in Seattle, got my start in dentistry in Seattle. Um, I'm going to actually even um, call him out, he's, um, if he's still around, but um, an instructor from the University of Washington, Dr. George Hussey, was my uh. first dental employer. I had wow. no dental experience. And uh, he obviously saw something in me. He made me do all sorts of tests. I did Myers-Briggs and uh -huh. uh, hand motion control technique tests. And um, so I really have to call out to uh, Dr. George Hussey for recognizing something in me that I didn't see in myself because my degree is uh, in liberal arts education. <laughs> so if you would have told me I was gonna be involved in a science industry, I would have said not in a million years. If you would have ever told me that I was going to be uh, married to a dentist, 
I would have said never. And if you had ever told me I was going <laughs> east of the Mississippi, not never. So I do have a fondness for um, Seattle. It's, uh, you know, I spent 22 years living there, loving there. And um, a little side note about me and Ross is that uh, he was willing to give up his license in North Carolina and take his boards again to be with me. So that is a testimonial to, um, uh, to us working together and loving each other and being together. So um, there you have it. Um, so it's a pleasure to be with Washington. And I Thank miss you. the fact that I'm not at the meeting uh, this year. And uh, I'll see you next year at the, at the Washington State meeting. Well, um, two things before you get started. Yes. Uh, yeah. You're very lucky to be married to a dentist. <laughs> and uh, number two is when I got out of dental school, I worked uh, for Dr. Hussey. Uh, I tempt uh, both <laughs> as a, a dentist and as a hygienist. So oh my what a gosh. small world. That is All a right. very small world. That is, a, <laughs> once again, you know, what is it? Six degrees of Kevin Bacon or something like that, that we're all... We're all connected, and one of the things that I've been in, I've been in consulting um, well over 30 plus years. I was in my young, my early 20s when Dr. Hussey hired me, and uh, we won't talk about my age now, but I'm probably <laughs> old enough to be many uh, viewers' grandmother um, at this point. Uh, and here's what people always say to me, and my friends say to me, Deborah, when are you going to uh, retire? And I said, when I'm no longer relevant. Um, and I, so I think that is uh, what I'm no longer interested or interesting and relevant is a time for me to, to step away. Uh, but that hasn't happened so far. And now here we are, something new and exciting. Um, we had a team meeting this morning and I said to my team, I said, uh, everybody give me a show of your hands. How many of you remember the AIDS HIV crisis? And only one of them did. Oh. Oh. <laughs> like, Oh my, I'm, yes. Yeah. But I remember that time and um, that we even talked about stainless steel operatories, um, you know, and, and I said to the group, I said, uh, before HIV AIDS, uh, doctors typically did not wear a mask unless they'd had garlic for lunch. And they, if they had a cut on their finger, they wore a little finger cut which looked off, 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 almost obscene. So, um, <laughs> And now look at us. And back then we thought the world was over and it, it, and it's still going on. And, you know, and the world is, uh, is over and it's still going on. So uh, we're going to get started um, about the, the idea is we've been out of off the office for what, uh, almost a month now for some of us. And I know uh, Dr. Hess, I think, um, Washington, you are talking about going back end of May, possibly. Um, May 18th right now is the target date. Uh, the governor's come on a couple of times over the last week and a half, and we were expecting to hear um, an update to that schedule, whether we'd be getting back earlier or later and that, and he uh, has really not uh, changed uh, that date on us. Yeah. So. So in, in uh, North Carolina, we are April 29th, but it, once again, our governor has kind of held out and said, we'll wait and see um, if our numbers rise, that may be adjusted. Um, the, I said, uh, the university in Boston, um, they're not even gonna open school until 2021, January, 2021. Their colleges are closing. Uh, they're gonna remain closed. So here we are. Here we are in the, and what people um, have a hard time with most of all is fear of the unknown. And that's where we are. Interestingly enough though, um, when we talk about comfort zones and we talk about fear zones, uh, and uh, I, I have to stop and, and do a shout out because I'm not gonna even touch the wonderful psychology that Janice Hurley touched on yesterday. She did a great job. I also want to throw out my disclaimers. I'm not an attorney, nor am I an HR uh, expert in terms of I don't have a license to be uh, human resources. There are amazing people out there. I'm not a dental CPA, um, but I would, I want to do a shout out to my colleagues. And I know Dr. Hess, you mentioned about how we are such a collaborative group and we truly are. There are some exceptional resources in the industry and um, 
I'm going to say this in a lovingly parental, motherly, grandmotherly way. There are times when you call upon your friends to commiserate and plan and strategize. And there are times to call upon your experts and your professional to actually pull the trigger, sign the loan, do it, you know, make the decisions. So, and there's a difference. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, Cedar Solutions, Paul Edwards is an amazing HR um, resource, Tim Twig, uh, Ben Erickson and Associates Practice Personnel Systems. I would not know what, what to have done without them. Uh, I would not know what to have done without Alan Schiff, who is a dental CPA, and he is the president of the Academy of Dental CPAs. Uh, and again, a, a shout out uh, to him without aggrandizing him um, that had I not, had we not been working with a dental CPA in our practice, I think that um, we got a lead ahead of about, we got ahead of everybody else because we were working with somebody who was uh, familiar with the dental industry. So I have to give a shout out to those people and to my resources um, in terms of OSHA and infection control protocols. I mean, Linda Harvey and Debbie Carr for HIPAA, I mean, um, Janice and Penny and, and uh, Judy Kay and Lois. I mean, there's an exceptional group of people. So for those of you who are saying, wow, is it time to hire a someone to help me in my office. Um, I would encourage you to look at the resource of the Academy of Dental Management Consultants. Um, most of us are members um, and there are specialists and there are experts and there are general consultants among that group. And uh, co consultants from that group are, have been vetted. They can't simply uh, join. They have to be approved to join. They have to have a track record they have to have testimonials from uh, clients with whom they've succeeded. So I really, um, if this is now the time, but also hire for what you need right now. Do you need someone to help you with um, OSHA? Do you need someone to help you with HIPAA, uh, with, um, you know, with accounting, with human resources? I am not in, licensed to be an attorney, or, so I just wanna go on record. But I, there's a part of me that wants to say, I'm not an attorney, but I did sleep at a Holiday Inn last night. I mean, I just, that's kind of bears walking right into that old, um, that commercial. So we're not, we haven't been in our office for four weeks and my team has been out uh, since March 20th. Uh, even navigating unemployment for us uh, was difficult, not only for us, but for um, our, our team. They, um, we, I mean, my husband is 72 years old. Don't tell him I told you when you see him on Monday. And he's never filed an un unemployment claim. I mean, so uh, none of us really knew how to navigate that. So I think uh, that's, Im that's important to remember that we're navigating um, EIDL and PPPs and SBA loans and that sort of stuff. So that's all new. U utilize, um, utilize experts in that. But when I started to talk about fear and I started to talk about comfort zones, and if you think about this, um, we don't do uh, most of our learning when we're in our comfort zone. M most of the time, when we're in our comfort zone, we're coasting. Uh, we're having fun. Uh, we know what we're doing. Um, I, I'll give an example. My daughter lives in Brooklyn, and she rides her bike everywhere. Um, and I'm talking not just a nice casually ride to the park. I'm talking she lives in Brooklyn and works in Manhattan, and she oftentimes in the spring and summer rides her bike across the Brooklyn Bridge, across, and she does her mar shopping, her market. She goes to, she puts on these messenger bags on, the, on her back and she rides to the market and fills her pack with pounds and pounds of groceries and rides home to Brooklyn. So I was visiting her last summer and she said, we're gonna ride to the market. I'm rent I've rented you a bike. I talk about fear. Um, how do I navigate the cars? How do I navigate? Am, am I going to have a heart attack? Am I going to be able to ride? And so I was truly out of my comfort zone. So my daughter got on her bike and coasted and I was just like, um, and she made me wear a helmet and I had a little bell on my bike and, and I was just out of my comfort zone and I was into a fear mode and I learned, I learned how to navigate cars. And I learned how to pace myself so that I could make it to the market and put a messenger bag on my back and carry groceries. And, but if I had just ridden my bike to the park, I wouldn't have learned anything new. 
Uh, this is not a ride to the park right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is, we are not riding to the park. We are, we are strapping a messenger bag on and riding our bike from Brooklyn to Manhattan right now. We are in um, an amazing fear zone. And that is typically when we have the, the, the most breakthrough is when we, when we go through fear. Um, so it's scary. Um, and it's going to be scary for a while. And, we'll, and just like HIV and AIDS, it was scary back then in the 70s. Uh, we were all afraid we were going to die. And we, and we didn't. And we survived it. And, and once again, we will survive this. It will be different. It's going to be expensive. Let's face it. We've lost, not only have we lost revenue, but now we're going to be generating additional costs because of our PPE and, um, and what that's going to, what that's going to happen. So the question is not that it happened. And, and, and I've been on a couple of blogs and I have been on a couple of um, uh, webinars and go to Facebooks. And I would say that it's really, I think it was okay for a while to be in panic and uh, to be in the panic room, but now it's time to get out of the panic room and start making some, some, um, some, some drastic, dramatic uh, steps to moving forward. We are not going to be in our pajamas forever. I know for some of you, that's very disappointing. Some of you are going to try and come up with a new uh, protocol for wearing pajamas at work. And actually, scrubs feel kind of like pajamas. Um, they're just, you know, they're cleaner pajamas. Uh, we're going to have to wear different shoes. We're going to have, there's a lot of things, but we're not going to be stay home forever. Um, is this bad news? Yeah, there's, um, there's a little, a little funky story and, and I'm probably going to offend at least two people in the next hour or so. But some of you remember the story about the little, uh, two little boys who were taken to a door and when they opened the door, one little boy looked in the room and he said, there's nothing but horse poop in here. And the other little boy said, well, there must be a pony. So, so I think the, you know, we've, we're dealing with a lot of horse poop right now, but somewhere there's a pony in there. There's a, there's a, there's going to be changes. Um, I think now is a time that we are going to be more aligned with our teams, maybe than ever. We're going to be more aligned with our patients um, more than ever. So the question you need now have to ask yourself and your time to uh, be back is getting closer is what are we going to do to respond? And I think what's important to know your patients and your team members are distracted and they're distraught. So one of the first things that we need to think about is that when we are engaging our patients and when we are engaging our teams, we have to give them our comfort and our assurance. Um, so I think especially, and I don't know what kind of, um, what my population is this afternoon. I know Janice Hurley mentioned this yesterday as well. Uh, so beautifully said. Um, it's almost, um, without wanting to be um, non-binary, I, mean, I want to be as non-binary as possible. I'm not gender specific, but if you think about it, our team looks to, whether you're a male or a female dentist, our team looks to us as being the leader. We may not call ourselves the leader. We might call ourselves the mom or the dad. We are kind of the mom and dad of the team. And when, um, if, you, if you think about yourself as a child, or if you think about yourself being a parent of a child, if the parent looks frightened, the, the child is going to be frightened. If the parent looks confident, if the parent takes the child by the hand and says, I've got this, then the child will be assured. And I think this is a time when the owner of the practice needs to take his or her patients by the hand and his or her team members by the hand and say, I've got this. I've got this. So the more prepared we are, to get back and the better we're the more confident we will be not only again for our for our patients but also for our team so um i think it's the important is how are we going to bring everybody back but right now we, we we don't know when we're coming back i mean we talk about we're getting closer to that time but we don't know 
We really, I mean, we've actually reset our, our, our start time once again this morning. We set a new start time and we may set a new start time once again. I think this is a great time and it would be interesting if we, if this were a live audience, I would ask people to um, show me with their hands. And so you can do this in your, in your comfort of your home and nobody has to know that you actually raised your hand to nobody. Pretend like the dog cares or the cat. Um, how many have been more busier than ever? I mean, Dr. Hess, you've been crazy busy, nuts. Um, I, my, 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 my people, my, I say my people, my consulting friends and I have been busier than ever. We haven't been paid for being busy, but we're busy. We're busy learning. We're taking webinars. We are taking, we are not only providing webinars and providing learning, but we are learning ourselves. Uh, I think there was a day last week, I started my first webinar at 10 in the morning and I finished my last one at nine o'clock that night. I think I took a break for lunch um, or a glass of wine, um, which would have been, you know, if I had to choose, you know, that would be a tough choice. Um, no, it wouldn't, it would have been the wine. So I think this is a great time to say, wow, um, this is a great time to learn. Um, I was talking to my husband the other day. We are still talking. We, we've been, you know, in sheltered in place for a month and we're still speaking to one another in polite tones. And I know that's a, an achievement. And I said to him, it's, it's interesting that we have hardly had the television on. Um, I haven't binge watched anything. People were talking about binge watching. I've never seen, I'm going to go on record. I have not seen the Tiger King. King's King, don't know who that is, what that is. I haven't binged watched any television programs. I haven't seen any movies, um, but we all talked about we were gonna binge watch. I thought my house would be cleaner by now. And I thought every closet would be pristine and my yard would be uh, immaculate, but none of that has happened because I have been taking the time to learn leadership and communication skills. I've been taking time. So this is the time and your time is getting shorter to learn and i here's what i would also encourage participate in information that uplifts you not drags you down you have two choices you have good news and bad news well we get the bad news um i mean today and with today's technology news runs 24 7. we wake up to it we go to sleep to it uh we dream about it it's everywhere I think there's a time you say, you know what, I know this is all happening and I'm not going to ignore that this is happening. And I do need to learn about how many new occurrences have happened in my area. And I need to learn about how many deaths and I need to learn the, the latest and the greatest. But I also have this other piece. And this other piece is I want to learn things that uplift me or I want to participate thing, in things that are positive. For some that might be reading their Bible. For others, that might be listening to uplifting meditation. Um, I think Janice even talked about that yesterday, about doing things that are positive. For Janice Hurley, that's CrossFit. And she's nuts that way. And, um, you know, and, and uh, for other people, it's, uh, it's, it could be sewing, it could be crocheting, it could be um, writing letters. Um, this is a great time to do things that are uplifting as well as listening to bad news all the time and, and drag you down. Um, I think that we move toward that which we think about. And if we think about negativity, we will move toward negativity. If we think about positivity, we move toward positivity. So I would really encourage to, to take this time as an opportunity to learn. Oh my gosh, Dr. Hess, you have all been amazing in providing the education that you've provided through your through these programs. And it's all been at no, no charge. It's gonna be very interesting when we start getting back into the new normal and we start talking about um, charging to attend a meeting. Uh, it, wow, what? This has all been free. So take advantage of what's been offered to you. Um, and once again, uh, there was a pony. Here's the pony. The pony is all of this free education. My team who are, um, are watching this right now are going to recognize this from this morning. And I tried to block out your names. I hope it's fuzzy enough. Uh, 
keep the team engaged. Let them know that they matter. This is, you know, key. How, how, how often have you been in touch with your team uh, during this time that you've all been sheltered in place and during this time that your office is either partially closed or fully closed, you're only seeing emergencies. Um, this is a great format, having Zoom meetings. There go, there's go-to meetings, there's Facebook Live. You can Instagram one another. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being on the telephone. I know one week Ross picked up the phone and called everybody and said, how are you doing? How are you? I mean, what's going on? And I will admit, um, our first couple Zoom meetings, there were tears. Um, we missed each other and we were frightened and we still are. Uh, I think this is a great time to, to let your team know they matter, keep them engaged, whether that be, I don't know about every day. I think my team would like, uh, they got things to do, but at least, at least once a week, if not twice a week, um, write them thank you notes, tell them how much they matter to you. Do sort of some, you know, some, um, some fun things, ask them how they're feeling. Uh, what questions can you answer for them? Uh, show um, their empathy. We just learned today that one of our team members has been told she, she shouldn't come back for a while because she's having some respiratory issues, not COVID related, but um, you know, that's, we have to think about, wow, what, how's she feeling about that? Um, we've got one team member who is actually studying to enter dental school. So everybody, you've got to say a prayer. And if you are, I don't know if she wants to go to the University of Washington, but she'd be a great candidate if, you, if, you, uh, if she applied for that school. But those are those things to, um, to think about, to, to involve your team, um, staying in touch with them, um, having virtual social time. I don't know how many of you have participated in a coffee chat or a cocktail hour or uh, lunch with your team and you're having a virtual lunch or virtual coffee, um, you know, uh, some favorite libation, and you're all, you know, it's more, it's social, not meeting, uh, and to talk about um, each other, do something fun. One of the things, and I'm sorry my team was listening, I, um, I didn't do a scavenger hunt this morning, but we've done a virtual scavenger hunt uh, with our office, so every morning I go on my phone and I say, this morning your item to find is a star. Your item to find is a flower. Your item to find is a cross. Um, I think yesterday was a flower. We've had, there was spoons, whatever. And everybody participates. They send a, a picture and then we all comment on each other's pictures. Um, kind of a fun, you know, um, I know that some of my clients, you know, they have to wear a hat, a uh, funny hat, or they, you know, you know, one day it's baseball week. I think one of our organizations last night had Disney night. We had to wear something from Disney. Um, the other thing, and I want to get, um, send them something. So everybody's home. Um, we can't, we typically, we have lockers in our um, staff lounge and by lounge, I'm telling you it's the size of um, a standard operatory. It's very small. We have no television or couch in there. It's small. In fact, one of our conversations today was how many people can be in that room at once having lunch? And it's probably going to be one. That's how small this room is. But we have lockers and my team is used to me sneaking something into their lockers for a fun surprise. Uh, the last day we were there, um, I, I put toilet paper in their lockers. <laughs> it, was, it was important. It was important piece of, inform of, of things for them to take home. And I put in chocolate and we put in little bottles of Prosecco. And so, um, uh, about two weeks ago, um, I thought it was time to send them something. And I went online to a company out of Arizona called Tucson uh, Tamale Company. And I sent my team tamales. And if I didn't know what they would really like, they got a gift certificate. But if I kind of knew them, then I kind of knew what they would like. I sent them frozen tamales. And I believe the sentiment said something like this. I know your home sheltered in place. Here are some tamales to feed your face. Um, and I, and, um, so, uh, it's kind of a fun, it's letting them know that they're still in our thoughts. We still care about them. So a question I have for the audience is what are you doing to stay in touch and let your team members know that they still matter to you? Um, um, and then I, I'm going to, I want to give credit, um, um, when I get to this point about SurveyMonkey, because I actually learned that yesterday from Janice Hurley uh, about doing that. 
I, but in, this was uh, prior to listening to Janice, here were some of the questions that I would encourage you to ask your team. What changes would you like to see in the practice? Not necessarily COVID related. Um, it could be overall related, generally general relation related. Um, what changes will we need to make in the practice? This is gonna be huge right now. Um, I have a team survey and I'm happy to share it. You can uh, shoot me an email or I can, I can send it to Dr. Hess or I can send it to the AGD and they can send it out, but you can shoot me an email. And it basically asks the team how they feel about working for you. Do they feel respected? Do they feel that they have a friend at work? Do they feel that they are heard? Do they, do, do they, they feel that their opinions matter? Do they feel that they make a difference? You know, I think it's important, especially now, um, that we feel important. Most of you have read of uh, the surveys about what do pay, what do you, do your employees uh, value the most? And everyone knows who's been in dentistry for a long time that the for, that the first answer is not money. That is not what your team members value the most. What your team members value the most, and experts will um, attest, is acknowledgement. They want to know that they're doing a good job. They want to know that that their efforts, their actions per minute matter to you. So um, this team survey that I've created is to ask the team, um, do you feel respected? Do you feel listen, that, that someone listens to you? Do you feel you have a friend at work? Um, and so I'm happy to send this about oh, a dozen questions. And, it's, and it, you can actually um, ask your employees to send it to you anonymously or you can um, have a, a conversation in a Zoom meeting about it. Uh, maybe they, they all get sent in to uh, somebody who will keep the, the statistics um, and the information anonymous and send it back out. Um, doctors, I say this lovingly and I say this as a consulting friend. This might be the time for you to do some self-actualization of how am I as an employer? I'm gonna ask these people to come back. And for some of these, for some of my team members, they may feel they're coming back at risk. So how, how do they feel about that? How do they feel about coming back, um, poss potentially being at risk? They've been sheltered in place and they feel fairly safe. They've been with their family members. They've been with their dog. They've been having drinks across the driveways with their neighbors, but they haven't come in as close a contact. And interesting enough that what some people will say, we are as close to aerosols as anybody where this is spread and you're asking your team to come back and potentially be at risk. How important is it that they know that you care about them, that they are willing to take the risk with you? And I think that's an important conversation to have, um, that, they, that, they, that you understand that this is a risk. So once again, thank you, Janice Hurley for yesterday when she suggested sending a survey monkey to your team members. And I went, what a great idea. So last night I asked, I sent five questions to my team members. Um, I'm trying to remember the five. Um, it was how comfortable do you feel about coming back? What concerns do you have? Do you feel that you are gonna be working in a safe environment? Do you feel that our patients are gonna be working in a safe environment? Uh, my other question is, do you feel that our start date is an appropriate start date for us. I'll tell you about the results of that in a minute. And then I asked the team how they would feel about us uh, assessing uh, this, an additional PPE fee to our patients. And I'll talk about that in a moment as well. Um, the answers came back based on, and then again, I'll be, I'm totally transparent. Most people say I'm too transparent. Uh, we had intended to start back on May 5th. The governor is going to lift April 29th. We had two dates scheduled for training prior to seeing patients. We were going to see, do training on May the 1st, and we were going to do training on May the 4th, come back and see our patients on May the 5th. But based on my team's survey and based on the meeting we had this morning with an expert, Linda Harvey, on what we need to do to prepare, we're not ready to start May 5th. So imagine if I had uh, announced that we were going to open May 5th and I had not given my team an opportunity to discuss that, to share their concerns, to be surveyed how they felt about that. How, 
how comfortable would they have been if I made that an edict, if you will, that that was going to be our start, as opposed to ask them to participate in the decision. So when we, we all came to an agreement this morning that we were bumping our date back because we really felt we weren't ready. Um, and that was as a result of taking a survey. I will also say I mentioned about the PPE fee and um, I'm again, I'm not the OSHA queen. Other people are. I can know I can name three right now that if you haven't consulted with them, you should uh, unless you've been, you know, um, in the quicksand of um, infection control protocol webinars. Um, so uh, most people are now suggesting that there, that there is uh, appropriate cause to establish a PPE, additional PPE fee for your patients. Delta, most Delta plans are now covering uh, that fee. Um, you'll probably hear the code. I'm not an insurance expert, but the code is 999. And it's the uh, PPE code. And Delta is, is um, honoring $20 for a fee. Um, I have heard um, that anywhere from $20, I actually heard a doctor in Chicago is charging $100 for a PPE fee. So you need to determine, you might want to cost out how much additional is it going to cost me per patient? Am I going to be able to recover some of those costs, not all of those costs? But, I, but that, was a, that was also a question that I asked my, my team. H how comfortable um, are you that we are gonna, that we, to assess? If we assess an additional PPE fee, um, when we all discussed it, everyone thought that that was very fair. The reason why it's important for the team to feel that that's fair, rather than um, having a stated policy, rather than going back and announcing to the team that we're gonna have a fee, when they, once again, they're involved in the decision, the important piece is once you've established that we're gonna have a fee for an additional uh, protocol fee for our PPE costs, now we have to talk about how are we going to introduce this fee to our patient? It's one thing to say we're gonna do it and to establish the fee that will be appropriate for it. Now, as a team, we have to talk about how are we gonna say it? And that's an important conversation to have before you get back. We spent a lot of time this morning in our meeting talking about um, how, we're what, how we're gonna word things. And I listened to a, a, a program last night and I wanna quote her, um, Sam, pulling up my notes, cause I'm old. Um, and this is what she said. She said, soft skills are more important now more than ever. How we say what we say is critical. And I think that is true, that we, we avoid apologizing. We avoid saying, I'm sorry, but that's our new policy because you know we have all these additional costs. So we're almost saying, yeah, we're, it's not right that we're doing this, but we are anyway. Um, when we say, I'm sorry, but says, I have information that I'm going to tell you that's going to let you down. I mean, isn't that how you feel when you hear that? I'm sorry, but you're waiting for, uh, what's the next step? Um, the good news is that we have worked very diligently on making sure that we have all of um, the protocols in place to keep you safe while you are here. Um, and I think that, so again, give your patient the good news as opposed to the bad news of there's going to be a new fee. Um, so I think that's important. Will some, will, will all insurances cover it? Probably not. Will some? Probably. Um, but, I, but I think it's important. I have a couple other little tips I have to bring in. I'm, I'm going to kind of, you know, pay attention to my time. Um, you know, I've got all night. You guys have other things you have to do. Uh, but I think, for example, we used to give our patients um, headphones to listen to music. We can't do that anymore. Can the patients bring personal headphones in? Certainly they can. Can they bring um, their phones in to listen to music on their device? Yes. But my recommendation is, even though it's their own aerosol, and one of my team members, or somebody mentioned that to me today, well, uh, by the way, your patients shouldn't have their phones um, active in the operatory. That's a HIPAA violation. So they should have never had their phones in there in the first place. It's a violation for, this is a recording device. 
so they shouldn't be in there. But if they want to listen to music while in your care, I would put their phone in a Ziploc bag as a, as a, just a nice complimentary additional precaution that your patients are aware that you are visually showing them that you're keeping things as sanitary as possible. There's going to be things that you are not going to think about, and you're going to have to, team, to have team meetings about this. And another example, all your fun stuff is going to have to come out of your uh, reception room. However, I did find out today that we can still have flowers. So flowers are not um, a problem. So this would be the time, ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh, you would think that I'm a florist. This would be the time to put fresh flowers in your, I mean, not the plastic ones or the silk ones because they absorb, they, you know, stuff stays on there. But fresh flowers, great time for fresh flowers in your reception room. The coffee, the coffee station is going to have to go away. Um, so now I, I have now created, and I, with this morning we came up with it. Now our coffee station is now our sanitation station. It sounds like a Sesame street thing, sanitation station. Um, so that is going to be where our patients will, um, it, within their comfort, they're going to, you know, whether, you know, sanitize their hands, wear their masks, put on gloves, if that's their comfort zone. Um, so those are things you're going to have to work through. Um, you know, one of the things we talked about in our meetings, and I'm, I'm not going to go through everything, you're going to have experts tell you about that, is uh, you're going to have to monitor your restroom, and someone's going to have to be responsible for sanitizing that restroom after every use. Um, who's going who, who's gonna to be doing that? So the, this is why, as we were going through this process this morning, why we realized we weren't ready. We hadn't thought about these things. Um, so... Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to tell you, you think you have all the time in the world. It, I got to remind you of, the, of, a, of a movie, a line from a movie, because I don't know how many of you like movies. One of my favorite movies when I was in high school, which was a long time ago, was uh, Barbra Streisand in Funny Girl. And I won't go through the whole movie. Right now, you're at home. You could watch it. It's a musical. I know. That's my degrees in theater. And Barbara Streisand and her husband have split. I won't tell you why. I mean, probably some of you know the split. And they're going to get back after he gets out of prison. And it's been 18 months. And they, he, talked, he, told, he told her, his wife, I think you should divorce me. I'm getting ready to go to jail. And I think you should divorce me. And she said, no, let's not make that decision yet. We have 18 months to think about this. And he comes back. And it's the day he's out of prison. He's going to see her. And she said, I've had 18 months to think about this. And I haven't thought about it at all until today. I've, I've stewed, I've cried, I've complained, but I really never thought until today. And ladies and gentlemen, don't make that you. You can't wait until the first day you're, you're planning on being back to think about these things. Now is the time. So really take a, take a look at what will your first days look like? Um, are you going to be able to see as many patients as you had planned? Probably not. Uh, our, our hygiene was jammed. Probably some of you feel the same way. Your hygiene was absolutely jammed. Well, can you jam hygiene right now with all the new protection uh, protocols that you're going to have to follow? Can you have one patient stacked on top of another? And can you have a patient in this operatory and a patient in this operatory? Is, is, the, is the safe distancing um, going to be in place if you are operatory upon operatory, if you have an open concept? Maybe not. So you're going to have to take a look at what is that going to, what are your first days going to look like? How am I going to space that out? One of the things that we are going to do is we, we are going to remove some of our chairs in the reception room. Not that our patients may sit in the reception room. And that's, again, personal choice. Are they going to wait in a car? Are they going to sit in a reception room? But when they walk in, we want to give them the perception that we are aware of safe distancing. I don't like to call it social distancing. We will still want to be social, but we're safe distancing. We're physically distancing. Um, so take time. You've got to take time to review your new protocols. So team members, you've got to get them prepared. I think it's also important to analyze your capacity. Um, this is kind of jumping off the PPE bandwagon, but really we have to do some analytics of our practice. If you haven't spent this time right now, um, being, analyzing your analytics, yikes, what have you been waiting for? You know, my mom told me this when I was, I was 37 when I had my daughter and my mother kept asking me when I was, when was I going to have children? 
And I said, well, mom, I'm waiting for the time to be right. I'm waiting for, you know, to be the right time. And my mother said, um, Debbie, I was younger then, I was called Debbie. And um, um, she said, Debbie, if you wait for the perfect time, you'll be waiting all your life. So when is the perfect time to look at your, to analyze your statistics? Um, you should really um, have a great um, analysis of your practice. You've had four weeks or more, and you may have uh, a few more weeks or more than that to really analyze the, your capacity, um, to take a look at what do I need? How many patients do I actually have? Um, if you want me to send you what your, what key performance indicators you should be looking at, I'll be happy to send that on this, or I'll do another webinar for Washington AGD on key performance indicators. There you go on what you should be paying attention to right now, because what's really going to be important, especially is your recall return rate. How many patients do I need to get in? Do, am I going to have to hire more people? Am I going to have to add hygiene days? Am I going to stagger my hours? Um, so you're going to, you're going to need to pay attention to that. That was one of our big dilemmas that we're looking at. Um, I mean, if, if I have to put on all this PPE garb and I'm in operative, can I get up with all this PPE garb up and go do a hygiene exam? No, I'm going to have to, there's going to have to be adjustments. How, how are we going to make that happen? So are we going to have like nothing but hygiene days where there is no operative? We're going to have nothing but operative days where there's no hygiene. So I don't have to get up and leave. I mean, team members, you're not going to be bouncing up and going to the break room to grab a quick cup of coffee anymore. You're going to be staying there in your PPE stuff. We learned today about there's a special way that we've got to take off the mask. We got to take off the mask a special way. We got to learn how to do that. Oh my gosh. So I think that's important. Also take a look at when you go back. And again, this is all about team engagement. And we haven't even talked about patient engagement yet. And we're going to be here till seven o'clock. Um, you are going to have, um, you're not going to have as much time as you used to. You're not going to be able to double book. So how are you going to spend your time? I really would encourage you to take a look at, first of all, what patients have been waiting, but also take a look at your most productive procedures and put getting those in first, getting those in first. Um, taking a look at, we've got, we've got patients, we've had a patient who's been waiting for veneers and she wants to get in. What do you think I'm going to do? Am I going to put her in or am I going to put some fillings in first? I'm going to put that which is most productive in first because we have been without income for a month. So I'm going to find those things that I can put in first. Oh, I have so much more to tell you. By the way, there might be new protocols you've established in your practice that you haven't had before. For example, you may be requiring your patients to prepay for dentistry because you don't want them to stop at the front desk to pay. You don't want to handle money and you don't want to handle credit cards at the front desk. Maybe you've never done that before. We've always done that. So it's not unusual for us. But if you've never asked your patients to prepay before, you might want to practice what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, how you are going to introduce new protocols to your patients. You may want to employ some technology. For example, for those of you who um, have care credit, you know that on the care credit on your website and on the care credit app, they have pay by provider. So your patients can actually pay um, online. If you, if you are a Weave client and you have the Weave telephone system, which I love, then they can actually text to pay. I mean, how many of us have a PayPal account and a Venmo account? And we've actually um, prepay for items or so we do it virtually. You're, you're going to maybe possibly need to train your patients and train your team, train your team first, train your patients to how to, how to accept virtual payments and how to pay virtually and then prepay. So take a look at that. Um, so you're going to have to have days without patients to train and set up new standards. Figure out what you can do and figure it out now. Um, put your protocols in writing, man, team, who's listening. I know, I think Lori's on, I think Ron is on. Dad, did we not learn that this morning? We got to put these protocols in writing. So one of the things that we uh, worked on this morning as a team is we divided the duties, who was going to be responsible for doing what portion of uh, protocols and um, our, 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 uh, for the head of the day. Veronica, who's at the front desk. Good morning and good afternoon. Um, she's going to be responsible for making sure that we are up to date with revenue well, that we are submit, and that's who we use 
for those of you who use Revenue Well or Solution Reach or Lighthouse, they have templates. They have COVID templates already in place for you to send to your patients to, pre, to do medical pre-screening. So before the patient even comes into your office, you can already send that to them through that technology so that you can pre-screen. Doesn't mean you're not gonna take their temperature when they walk in, but to pre-screen, that's gonna be a critical piece. So Veronica's responsible for that technology. Um, our clinical team are gonna be responsible for all of the infection control protocols, the ordering of the, the new materials. We learned about some new supplies that we needed to order today. So we've, and then I have the responsibility of writing out the um, notices to patients. Um, I have written some notices if anyone is interested. Uh, well, when I get to talking about sending um, statements to patients, I'll talk about the notice I've written, the pre-notice to sending statements. But um, what kind of notices are you gonna have when the patients walk in? What kind of notices at the front door? I mean, I really would encourage you to not have one of those, stop, don't come in here. Uh -huh. You know, you are entering a hazardous area. We could friendly that up just a little bit. So work on your verbiage. Um, and how, what you're going to say, what you're going to put in writing, what we have in writing. It used to not be as significant as what we say in person, but because we're going to have more things in writing now more than ever, it is going to be important to put things, to write well what you're going to tell patients. What sort of notice are you going to have? Um, you know, we've talked about, uh, we used to give... Um, bottled water to every patient. Um, Bronco would get up and she would ask, would you like a bottle of water for your journey home? And would you like it chilled or room temperature? And she would get up and she would be do the hostess thing and give the patient the water. Well, we can't do that anymore. So now we're talking about how the protocol of how we're going to make sure that the patient has water, that it's going to be on a tray for them. And we're going to have a little note that will say, this water has been set out specifically for you. Um, we're going to have to make a, a notice to our patients that, you know, it's like the old hotel or the previous motels. I grew up going to motels, not hotels. I grew up, a, you know, and in motels, you remember the tape that they used to have around the toilet seat? And it said, this restroom has been sanitized. Well, I mean, maybe it was. Maybe they just wrapped the tape around. They just took it off and wrapped it again. You don't know. But there was always a little note that said this this restroom has been sanitized specifically for you. We're gonna to have to have things like that. So we have to figure out how we're gonna write it. And I'm, that's my responsibility. So we all have a role of how we are get, preparing to come back. And we, by the way, we have a deadline of when it's all due. So, um, you know, my team is out there and they're working hard, they're walking their dogs and they're binge watching Tiger Kings and um, you know, the, whatever they're watching. And whatever they're doing, and oh, I know that Adriana is practicing her bench test. So we've got to have a deadline. When is this? When is it, when's it all due? So we are prepared. Um, so um, how are we going to have a, a barrier at the front desk? Where are we going to set the credit card machine if we have to take payments? What are we going to do about barriers? I again, I'm, I'm not um, infection control um, diva. Uh, and I'm not an expert, but there's going to have to be a barrier from the receptionist to the person. Our patients are so accustomed to coming in and giving us hugs and talking to us, you know, like this. So we're going to have to put up a barrier. The recommendation is that it's not a permanent barrier. It's a temporary barrier because you don't know how long you're going to need to have it. So you don't know, need to go out and build a bunch of glass and if you don't have it already, but you, but you find a way to have a temporary barrier um, between the receptionist and the patient when they come in. Also, where are you gonna put your credit card machine uh, so that it's one touch, the patient touches the their credit card and they take it back out on that process. Once again, we talked about the PPE fee. So make sure that you have got scheduled time with your team that you are able to put all of this in writing so you are prepared. Uh, once again, um, totally candid. I mean, again, I'm. I'm kind of the trifecta because I'm a dental spouse that works in a dental office. I'm a consultant and a speaker. I'm a team member. Um, and so I have to think about all of those things. And we finally realized as much time as we've been home, um, we're not ready. And I'll be totally honest, we, we, we thought we, were, we would be ready and we're not once we have learned the new protocols. So get a plan. And that was a great, great thing that we learned today that, we need to do more planning. Now, 
patients. We love them. We need them. Are they going to come back? There's, there's a argument about, I hope this information has been um, helpful for some of you. I mean, even I can't see you. So I can't see you nodding your heads or not nodding your heads. And some of you might have got up to get a, a carrot or two or um, so um, I'm hoping this information is helpful and, and helps you to start thinking what's going to be your next step. Hopefully you're taking notes of what is my next step? What do I need to do that I haven't done? I mean, that's important. So keeping our patients engaged. Wow, we've been away. Uh, certainly when we're going to take a talk about social media uh, in, in just a moment, man, that's going to, that's so critical now. When this all, when this all began, when this first started, doesn't it seem like ages ago when this all happened? I mean, it just seemed like, it, it seemed like yesterday, but it also seemed like so long ago. And I had listened to some webinars and some Facebook lives and they were talking about how to cut your expenses because we didn't know when this was coming back. We didn't know about the EIDL. We didn't know about PPP, SBA loans. And one of the things I had heard a speaker um, recommend was cutting out your social media. And if I could touch my face, I could, oh my gosh, that's the last thing you want to cut out. That's one of the most important ways you're going to be keeping your patients engaged and your team, by the way. But man, I need social media now more than ever. And I don't need cute pictures of donkeys brushing their teeth right now um, or little bunnies hopping or, you know, Snoopy on a skateboard. That's not what I need to do right now. I, I, I need to do some kind of interesting thing. So, and we'll, well, I'll spend a little bit more time talking about that. But this is the time to make care calls to your patients, especially those who are in mid-treatment. So if you have to say, am I going to call some of you? I have a client who has 17,000 active patients. They're going to call everybody. But they need to call those patients who are, um, who are actively, who had been scheduled, who are in mid-treatment. Um, I think that's really important. Care calls to say, how are you doing? Uh, what's going on? I know that... Um, and. Who should make the call? That's going to be a question. Part of, part of you might, if you have a large, uh, a, a large population, patient population, you might need to divide that. I know that Dr. Nash actually asked one of our hygienists to call her patients um, because she has the relationship with those patients and um, the other hygienist to call her patients because she has relationship with those patients. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nobody more critical to hearing that to, from, um, let me reword this. There is no one more important from the patients to hear, the, hear from than the doctor. It is amazing the impact it, that the doctor has when he or she makes their own call. Um, not that the team isn't important, but I think you would all agree that if I were to, for, for example, if I were trying to get a patient in the schedule, I knew I had, a, I had the absolute down pat re, uh, remark that I would make that would make sure that my patient would respond favorably if I wanted to move their appointment. And all I had to say was this, Dr. Nash asked me to call you. All of a sudden it becomes important. Dr. Nash asked me to call you. He's asked me, we've had some time become available in our schedule, and he asked me to hold it for you and give you the first right of refusal of that time. And it was like, oh my gosh, if Dr. Nash wants me to use that time, I'll be there. So there, doctors, this is a great time to make some, some really um, nice care calls. Is this time to call insurance aging? Probably, you've got the time to do that. Um, patients with outstanding treatment, checking in with patients who had treatment plans that they have yet to commence. You might just say, you know, I know that we were planning on doing this. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me, um, you know, how are you feeling about getting started? When would you, when would you like to start this? Um, we could go into the language skills of um, financial arrangements and all of that. Uh, I have to do another webinar. Um, but I think it's important for patients who had something planned or, or, or who were thinking about doing treatment. You sent them home with a treatment plan and they said, I'll let you know, I'll get back to you. Now, I know that's probably not important for them now to be thinking about, but I still want them to have it in their mind. So I might call them and say, um, Timmy, this is Deborah from, or this is Dr. Nash. And I know that um, before all of this happened, we'd been talking about some, out, some, some treatment that you were considering. 
And I didn't want you to think I'd forgotten about that. So give me an idea, um, you know, you've had time to sit at home and, and, um, and with a lot on your mind, but tell me how you would like me to proceed with the recommendations that we discussed prior to March 20th. We're not going to do a hard sell. I'm going to say, you know, I need to get in, you know, this is going to happen. It's not dramatic. It's not drastic, but it's, hey, I'm, I want you to know that that's still there, that I'm still thinking about that. Um, now is not the time to call patients about outstanding balances. This is not a time to clean up accounts receivable. However, someone brought up in another uh, meeting, what about sending out statements to patients? And because of that question, I came up with a pre-statement to the statement note to patients. And I'd be happy to share that with anybody. But it, it basically has said, you are going to be receiving a statement from us. We have... Um, and it's basically, you know, talking about, we know that we, many of us have been out of work and many of us have been sheltered in place. And, um, but we wanna make sure that you are very aware of what insurance payments may have come through um, since you've been away from the, from the office. I'd be happy to send it on. It's basically say is, you, before they get the statement, you're gonna say, expect a statement. And you might, this is when you might offer payment alternatives. You know, maybe we have not discussed in the, in the past how you can um, make payments on this treatment, and we do have some resources that can help you, and that would be a wonderful opportunity to um, introduce Care Credit. Care Credit, by the way, if you are a, a client of Care Credit, they're going to be offering some wonderful um, new COVID um, allowances for your patients and for new patients with new treatment. Um, go on to Care Credit and they'll tell you what, what they are, but they're going to be there once again. They're being very helpful to patients in how to finance care. So I think, um, you know, you have those resources as well. Social media, checking in. Um, we've done one about once a week. My team reminded me yesterday it was time to do one. Uh, our first one was Dr. Nash in the office. And he basically said, um, we're getting ready to, to leave you for a while, but we're, we'll be back. And he was sitting in the reception room saying, we, are, we have made the decision based on the CDC guidelines and the ADA guidelines, North Carolina Dental Society guidelines, that we are going to be closing the office for a while. And that, that, that message was, and we'll be back around April 1st. <laughs> well, April 1st has come and gone. The next video that we sent, which was, I've got to give her, and I think she's listening, um, Rhonda and Adriana did an amazing video on how to take care of your teeth at home. And she went outside and she says, we miss you. We know you miss us. And I'm going to give you some, base, some, some uh, reminder tips of, of how to take care of your mouth at home. And she talked about how to brush, how to hold the brush. Um, she, meant, she said, you know, that thing that Lori and I talk about that you hate us talking about, flossing? This is a great time to floss. And she talked about flossing and talked about um, uh, home, home aids, home care, beautifully done. We did one in our backyard that said, hey, we're still here. We're, we're here for emergencies. This, this, today we filmed one because we have so many of our patients who are healthcare workers. And we sent, we sent out a, a shout out thank you to our patients who are healthcare workers, how much we appreciated them and our first responders how much it, it, it uh, mattered to us that they were there for our community and for our country. Um, and then I sent one out and, and I don't think my team has seen it yet. And it's basically, please get him out of my house. I want him in, I want his hands in you or in your mouths as opposed, he is not a handy man. He's got handy hands, but he is not a handy man here. I get, I'm, when a man has lived with you for 25 years and he's asking you where the spoons go, the spoons are going in the same place where they've, I find, I'm finding things where they shouldn't be. I'm thinking, the spoons have been in the same place for 25 years. What happened? There was nothing new. He's like, you know, someone was, oh, Janice talked about that yesterday, how her son-in-law didn't know where the vacuum cleaner was. Yeah, they don't know. Get him. So I did a funny video for our patients as we're getting a little bit closer about, I can't wait for him to get back to treat, to care for you because um, he's a great dentist. He doesn't know how to change toilet paper. I mean, so, you know, get him back. Um, so I think social media right now is critical to be, to be involved in that. I think it's important to, um, I mentioned about writing. Um, I think to, to engage your patients 
I think it's important to write them a message. And this is my assignment. I've already worked on a couple of things to tell them what will be new. Um, before they walk into your office with the sign on the front door that says whatever it's going to say, not please, it doesn't say stop, you're entering a hazardous area. But whatever you're going to say before they walk in, um, I was at the doctor's the other day. I had to go in for um, my hepatitis booster. And as I approached the front door, there was a grease board and it said, sanitize your hands. There was a little table, said sanitize your hands, put on this mask, sanitize your hands again, take this towel and then enter the premises. Um, if you're gonna do something like that, let your patients know uh, once again, so they don't walk in and say, wow, that this is unfriendly. I'm so used to getting hugs. I'm so used to walking in and saying hello. Tell them what's going to be new. Put it in writing for your patients and send it out so they are aware. Let them know what you're going to be doing to make your practice better. Maybe you're going to be doing some, um, employing some things that you hadn't thought about um, in the past. Uh, maybe now you're going to say, we are, one of the things we might be doing is we might we might be um, starting to implement same day crowds. Maybe we're gonna really kick up that CEREC machine or that E4D machine so that the patient doesn't have to come back, you know, that we can actually see them in one visit. So maybe you're gonna have same day dentistry. That might be a new piece for you that, um, that or it might be something that you said, yeah, we kind of did it, but we're gonna take a, um, a, a, a more aggressive or assertive uh, attempt at doing same day dentistry. Um, In-office membership plans, boy, I think now is the time for if you don't, if you're not offering in-office membership plans now, this is a great opportunity to introduce your patients that we are going to have alternatives to help uh, keep the cost of your dentistry lower, and we're going to be offering some in-office membership plans that will help you um, with some, uh, I don't want to say discounted dentistry, but lower fees. Um, so there are a number of um, companies that will help you do that. Uh, we happen to use Clear in our office. There's Boom Cloud, another great plan. Some offices uh, self-administer their in-office membership plans. Eh, I, I would. I want to. I want to focus on taking care of patients. I want to outsource as much as I can to experts who know what they're doing. Um, and I hate math, so I'm going to let them do math and I'm, I'm gonna ha handle the plan. So you may wanna consider an in-office membership plan now. Anything that you're gonna be doing that is new to the patients, inform them before they come in. Um, so then it's information um, as opposed to a surprise um, and not a fun surprise. Um, once again, um, find out you know, that you're actually, you may want to connect um, with patients now with, with technology more than ever before. For example, you're now being asked to pre-screen your patients before they come in and, and ask the health questions. And now one of the things that we learned today um, uh, that I'm supposed to also be in touch with them 48 hours after they leave my practice to make sure that they feel okay. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to have to employ technology to do that. I will also tell you, you'll see down here on my, on my screen, um, if I can engage my patients with video, I will have an increase of 95% open rate by having video. Um, you know, they will actually tell you that if you have video on your website, you will have 87% uh, more engagement on your website when you show video. So some of these things that I'm talking about when you're talking to your patients about what to expect, you might want to do a fun video tour of your office and say, um, this is what you, you know, welcome back. Let me introduce you to some of the changes we have now made in our practice. For example, you probably remember this to be our coffee bar. We can't offer you coffee anymore, but what we can offer you is our sanitation station. This is where you will come in and um, for your comfort, one of the things that uh, question we had today was, will we be requiring our patients to wear gloves or not wear gloves? Um, according to our expert, it's not a requirement. So we're going to say, um, we, want, we, we want you to be comfortable. So should you be more comfortable wearing gloves, we'll be happy to provide those for you. Um, so, you know, that could be a video for your patients. The reception room may, may look different uh, when you come in. And when we talk about how we're going to schedule, 
um, you know, it may take a little bit longer to, to make an appointment in our office because we're not going to be able to see as many patients in, uh, uh, in the same time frames that we have in the past. Um, so um, I know that, that uh, you know how much we care about you, and I know that we are thinking that we're keeping your safety in mind. Um, that is first and foremost, is your safety and your comfort. So we are going to be changing our protocols in our office um, to make sure that you are comfortable while you are in our care. Um, we know you've been anxious to come back. Amazing. Isn't it amazing how many people want to have their teeth cleaned while they were out of work? They're like, well, why can't I just come in and have my teeth cleaned? Did you get the memo? We're closed. We're sheltered in place. And some people say, well, why can't I just come in and have my teeth cleaned? He did, you know, so pay attention. Um, so that might be a fun video to have, to come back in the office and shoot a video of, here's what's going to be new. You might want to show up the, here's the new shields you're going to be wearing. Here's the new mask. Here's what's going to be happening. So when they come in, it's like, I, ah, what's going on in here? This looks so strange, so strange. Um, yeah, so it uh, might be kind of fun to do a video thing. My team was listening. Be prepared. Might be kind of fun for us to do that. Um, yeah, what are going to be your, what are going to, uh, what are going to be your safety measures in your office? How are you going to practice safe distancing? Let your patients know what changes they're going to see. There aren't going to be any magazines in the reception anymore. The coffee station is going to be gone. So the amenities that we have uh, offered in the past, we're not going to be doing that. The new PPEs, the new questions, the health questions going to be asked. You know what's going to drive some people crazy? Isn't it fun when you go to your office and you, you, um, you ask your patients to, up, to update their health history information and they go, do I still, do I have to fill out new information? I, why do I have to fill this out? I just filled this out last year. Um, and they complain about having to fill out new health history information or new insurance information. Now, guess what? We're asking them to fill out um, another health history questionnaire prior to coming in. So this, you know, they sort of say, oh, another health history? Yeah, your safety, your health is, is absolutely uh, paramount to us and we want to make sure that we are working in the safest healthiest environment that we can so make sure that they know that are you going to be offering new hours let them know are you going to be more available let them know that once again are you going to how are you going to how are you going to get this information to your patients are you going to do it through newsletters are you going to do it through videos are you going to do it through email those are things you um, are going to need to decide it's time to think about innovation when we started at the beginning, I mentioned to you that um, it, typically we innovate we, when we are operating right close to the fear zone. That is usually when. When we are in our comfort zone, yeah, we're, we're coasting. Isn't that what we call it? We coast. When we are operating in our, close to our fear zone is when we start thinking, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to um, recalibrate. I'm going to have to rethink. We have to innovate. So as much as this has been catastrophic for many of us, for all of us, I mean, if you think globally, wow, if you think about the trickle down effect of the fact that we're closed and what that means to the supplier and what that means to the people who normally clean your office and what that means to the supplies that, supplies that they buy, how many lives have been affected by all of this? And the good news is how many lives we are going to change when we go back. And it, it starts with probably, it could be with our family, it, you know, that we're going to be able to stay alive because we're leaving each other for a while now. That might be a good thing for some of you. Um, I've actually enjoyed this time um, with my husband. Um, we've had more conversations, deeper conversations than we've had in a long time while we were caught in the myriad of patient care and lecturing and being on the road. And um, yeah, we've had time to really stop and think. Um, uh, we've been, um, we've been, we've always been prayerful, but our prayers have become more sincere, uh, more thoughtful, longer. How many of you have thought about this? And I don't, and again, uh, whether, whatever, however you pray and to whatever, if you, if you have a, um, something in your life to, to which you, hold high, um, a deity or something. Um, how many of you are praying longer than you have in the past? How many of their, your grace at the table takes on a different meaning than it did in the past? Um, yeah, so maybe it's time 
to innovate. How many of you have reached out to people you haven't reached out to in a long time? So the good news is we're going to change. The bad news is we're going to change. Um, <laughs> that's the good news and the bad news. We have to be careful, and we're getting to the point in our lives and in this webinar that um, there is so much information out there. Two weeks ago, so I'm sure the uh, I'm sure the number has changed, but two weeks ago I heard this statistic. There were 343,000 Zoom meetings per day. Per day, two weeks ago. I think I took 200. 22,000 of them per day. 343,000 Zoom meetings per day. Information overload. I can't be in all the meetings. I can't be in all the webinars. I can't be in all the Zooms. I can be in a lot. I can be in some. But I'm going to caution you to, be, to not get caught up in information quicksand. And you have so much information you don't act, you know, sometimes that happens um, for some of my clients, they're, they're, they're continuing to gather information. It's like my mother, when she said, when are you gonna have a baby? When's the time is right? Well, when is the time gonna be right? When is the time ever gonna be right? So sometimes I say that to my clients when I work in offices, I'll say, doctor, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? It's time to innovate. So you may have been forced to innovate. Here's Two more interesting statistics. One of them means nothing to us, but it's interesting. Um, since 430 BC, there have been 20 pandemic epidemics or plagues that affected the world all at the same time. Since 430 BC. Most of them been flu related, interestingly enough. Um, uh, um, I was reading a story about my, my grandmother and I had forgotten that before my grandmother married my grandpa, she had been married before. And I, I, it makes sense now that when I went to Ellis Island, why I couldn't find her name on the docket, I found my grandpa, but I'd forgotten that my grandmother came over married to someone else who died in the flu epidemic of 1917. Interestingly enough, my, mother, my grandmother married like three months after he died because back then she couldn't afford not to be married. Interesting, but, but 430 BC, there have been 20. This is going to be number 21. That's interesting. Here's what else I've heard, which is an interesting, and I don't know if it's a sad statistic. It just is a statistic. It just is. I heard the statistic that about a little less than one third of dentists aren't going to come back because they're, they're looking, it could be age. It could be fear. It could be this is so overwhelming. And for those who are considering not coming back, I, I was asked to, to present on a webinar last Wednesday night because some dentists were on this blog talking about, not, about finding another profession because this was just too hard. And you know what? Every profession is hard in its own way. Every profession is going to have, uh, have to adopt new protocols. Every profession is going to have to have a new regime, um, new standards. It's not, it's not only dentistry that was affected with this. It's everyone. And um, for those people who are thinking that they made, um, who, are, who are in dental school, who are thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done? Or those are just open. For, I have a client who opened his practice four weeks ago. The day he opened his office, March 15th. And March 20th, he was closed. What's he going to do? Well, he is absolutely picking up the gauntlet and saying, what a great time for me to learn. What a great time. Now, interestingly enough, because he wasn't in, in um, business for very long, guess what? He was not a candidate for any loans, any grants, any help. But he sat down and said, you know, I didn't do this. It, this wasn't my fault. But what am I going to do with it? And Janice Hurley spoke to that so eloquently yesterday. This wasn't my fault. It happened. And what am I going to do with it? So be innovative. Learn to reach patients in a new way that's going to extend beyond you, your office being closed right now. Um, I think also um, it might, this might be a great time that for new patients, you're doing a recorded office introduction. So you're saying, welcome to our practice. We're so glad you've chosen. Some of you might say, what new patients? They're, 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 they're out there. 
they're going to be out there. Uh, and I think that's important. I know that there's conversations about whether you want to call it teledentistry, telemedicine, or telehealth. Um, more and more people, more and more people are becoming, uh, uh, professionals are becoming very interested in telehealth dentistry. I think it's going to serve two purposes. I think uh, Janice was right yesterday that it is going to serve patients of record who want to show you, I, I this tooth broke. What should I do about this tooth? And they're going to FaceTime you and they're going to want to show you this. But I also have a different take on it. And it's probably because um, of our, the nature of our practice, which is uh, we have been fee for service, non, non in network forever. Um, and we've offered our patients um, consultations prior to general appointments for a long time. So for us, it's, it's an easier step than possibly for others that we are offering virtual consultations for patients. And interestingly enough, the psychology of, um, and I'll ask a question and you guys can ponder this in your homes as we're rounding, uh, rounding up our time together, um, that I think sometimes when we're at home, we may not take risks, but there might be some things that we look into that we wouldn't look, that we, we may not be as interested in doing a cosmetic consultation in person, but we might be interested if I know that I'm sitting in my pajamas and nobody knows that I'm really that interested, but I could actually talk to somebody about whitening or, or veneers or bonded restorations or Invisalign or something to enhance the appearance of my teeth and my smile. Um, if you don't think that enhancement services are going to be important when we come back, take a look at what's being sold on the internet right now. Take a look at Amazon and what's sold out on Amazon. And if you ask people what's the first thing they want to go to when this is, um, when this is over and, and the world opens up again, is it, it, the dentist is probably not number one. Um, hair salons will probably be uh, number one or number two. Aesthetics, right? Um, for some of us, it's eyelashes. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying who might say eyelashes uh, is, might be number one. It's going to be appearance enhancement services or people saying, I can't wait to get to my salon. I can't wait to get my eyelashes done. My nails are horrible. I can't wait to do my nails. None of that has gone away. And now more important people are going, oh my gosh, I, what am, I mean, I'm actually brave enough to show you my nails here. They're disgusting. Um, that's not number one for me, but it's going to be important. So when we say that, com that uh, uh, cosmetics and aesthetics aren't going to be important, they are. So, but here was going to be my question, and I'm going to confess something. So how many of you have actually gone online looking and, you know, shopping for something that you normally wouldn't have shopped for, but now that you're home, you're thinking, yeah, I actually looked at buy possibly buying a wig. This is not a wig, but I, I thought I could get, I could buy a wig. Look at these wigs. These look so cool online. And I'm thinking, oh, I could get a wig. This would be so awesome. I actually bought, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to try them. I bought magnetic eyelashes. I, I haven't, they, I've got five sets to try. I got to put some magnetic eyeliner on. I don't know if I'll do it, but I bought them. They're sitting waiting for me to try. Uh, I wouldn't have done that. So people are going to be back looking for um, elective procedures and elective services. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on May 18th, but it's, it's going to be. I know that. So what are you doing about virtual? Con this happens to be an example of the ad that we, we placed in a, in a magazine. It's actually came out uh, this week. And in the magazine was also an article about veneers uh, for patients. So we're not going away and our services aren't going away. It's what we are going to do with it. Um, so it's time to brainstorm with how you're going to Keep yourself engaged, keep your patients engaged, keep your practice in, engaged. What new services, new products, new protocols are you going to employ that's going to be exciting for patients? Um, not apologetic. We have new exciting features in our office. We're going to keep you safe. We're going to keep you protected. My team, I love you. I can't wait for you to come back. Um, I want you to feel confident and comfortable and safe that we're going to take good care of you. Um, this is the time that you take your, uh, virtually, because you can't touch them, but you take your team virtually by the hand and say, you know what, wh you know why we're going to uh, do this, how, why we're going to accomplish this and why we're going to succeed? Because we're going to do it together. 
Um, I, you know, if you think about it, um, we were born into a group. We work in groups, we play in groups, um, we worship in groups. I, I believe that we were designed to work together. And I think that the, the more we work together, um, keeping ourselves, our team and our patients engaged, um, the faster we will recover and we will rebound. So, man, this time went fast. It really did. And boy, oh boy, did you hit us with a lot of stuff. I know, I know. Uh, uh, I wanted to get up and throw up, but uh, <laughs> anyways, let's work through some of this. Why did I make you want to throw up? Oh, good golly. You know, I know, so, overwhelming. So many years just trying to, uh, you know, make our patients more and more comfortable. And, you know, that's a big part of who we are. Uh, all of us as dentists, and this, this is going to be tough. You know, it's interesting, and I know it will take questions, but I heard this early on. How many years, those of you who are hygienists who are listening, and doctors, team members in general, how many years have we told our patients that hygiene is essential? How hard have we worked on helping them understand the importance of hygiene protocol coming in for recall? And all of a sudden, guess what? It is no longer essential. It's a non-essential service. Yeah. However, I laughed about this. Um, my stepbrother manages a Domino's pizza, um, whatever you call them, restaurant or um, takeout. My brother's services are essential. My brother, who, is, who manages uh, Domino's pizza, that's an essential service. But having my teeth cleaned is no, so now, we train them to understand the, how essential it was, and we, we've really got this pre-appointment system down, how beautifully it works. Now, all of a sudden, it's been not essential for, for a month to six to maybe eight weeks or longer. Now, we've got to step back in and talk about how essential it, it once again. It's essential again. Yeah. So, yeah, tough, tough. Okay. Put together, because we got a team. Could you uh, repeat that PPA, uh, ADA code? Uh, Somebody thought it was D1999. It's D999. It's, you know, it's the code that we typically use for, in fact, we tried to call Dr. Charles Blair today to verify this, um, but the code is D999. Um, I verified it with another one of my colleagues. Um, and, and, you, um, and Delta apparently will pay, has already assessed that they, that they will allow $20 for a, a 999, D999 code. All righty, uh, what are, where are all the guidelines or mandates on removing specifics from reception area? Oh, well, um, there's so many resources now. And, and again, there's webinars to do this. Um, once we, we worked with, uh, our office worked with Linda Harvey, um, who is just stellar in uh, walking through that. And she, if you go on to, um, her, uh, Linda Harvey, um, it's something Linda Harvey Institute, and somebody may be able to put it in the chat faster than I can find it. She actually has that, uh, da uh, that download uh, sheet on what you, what you need to remove, what you should remove. Um, basically all kind of the fun stuff, sort of, except flowers. Order, start ordering flowers. I can't wait <laughs> to uh, put them back in. So use the PPP money on flowers is what you're saying. Yeah, use that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we have we actually before we closed, we again we had weekly deliveries with sixty dollars a week, and um, they 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 made a difference. If that's the only thing that's going to be in a reception room, yeah. yeah. Hey, here's something that you you know that you mentioned the PPP money. Here was an interesting blog last Wednesday that I was on um, participated in people freaking out about whether or not they were going to be able to spend their money in, in time because you, know, you have X amount of time where you can spend this PPP money. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's cheap money. <laughs> I mean, if you don't spend it all in this, in that period of time, spend it to pay it back. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, we these people are freaking out. Oh my gosh, should I take the money now? Should I not take the money now? And unfortunately those who waited. Yep. You're going to have to wait now for uh, Congress to come up with another, uh, another um, 
verification or another approval because the initial PPPs are gone. Yeah. So if you waited because you were afraid, um, now you're going to have to wait for them to approve it to move forward. Spend, yeah, so buy, yeah, buy flowers. Yeah, my team said, oh, this must mean that we're going to get some exceptional bonuses. <laughs> um, and here's, a, here's what you can't spend it on consulting. Rats. You can't, oh. you can't pay for my services um, or J Penny or Janice or Judy K or Lois. Um, you can't pay for our services. Um, that has to come out of, uh, you can pay for other things, but yeah, there's certain things you can and can't pay. But, and I'll give you a piece of advice. And, and again, I'm not an attorney and I'm not an accountant, but when we, we did receive our PPP money and we have an amazing CFO, she's independent contractor. If anybody wants to work with her, I couldn't have done this without her. She was my lifeline. Um, and she, when we signed our papers, she asked the banker, should we establish a separate account so we can keep track of how we spent it? And she has a different way of how we're going to track that. So he said, no, the way that Brenda has designed of how it's going to be tracked is easier than opening an individual account. So he, our, our banker has suggested not opening a separate account for that money. FYI, that's okay, not a question, but FYI. Okay, uh, this is obviously from a doctor. My staff doesn't want me to keep harassing them uh, right now. What should I do? So. Find ways to have more fun with them. I mean, again, hopefully they're saying harassment in a, in a loving kind of fun way. Yeah, there was an LOL on there. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think my team, I think they kind of, as much as they hate his joking, his terrible jokes, <laughs> um, but I think they kind of miss it as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think that uh, you know, here's the other thing. Um, reach out to them with a purpose. I mean, I think there's two ways to reach out to your team. One is a fun way. Hey, you know, let's, let's have coffee together. Let's have coffee and donuts or, and this would be really interesting if you could arrange it. I don't know how, but if you could say, let's have coffee and donuts together and have coffee and donuts sent to your team, mm. that'd be pretty cool. I have to figure out how to do that. Um, so I think one is a non-purpose meeting. Let's just check in with each other. And another one is, hey, we've got an agenda. There's, a, there's an agenda here. One of the recommendations, there's a couple of, how do I, my team is on unemployment. So do I pay them for required meetings? Well, um, Janice yesterday recommended that you, that you ask them to volunteer their time. And another recommendation is you ask them to bank it. That keep track of the time that we're gonna be spending together. Um, in these required meetings and bank those hours when we come back. Um, that would be another way of doing that. When we are seeing patients, uh, we are, are, my team's clocking in. They're actually clocking in right now. If they're, if they're, they're going to be seeing some emergency patients tomorrow, FYI, for those of you who didn't get the call yet. Um, and <laughs> so they'll be clocking in. And when they report their, their earnings, their wages for their unemployment, they'll be, uh, noting how many hours and how much they were paid during that week. Okay. Keep it clean. Uh, Keep it clean. Okay. Uh, again, protocols of spacing and patient uh, logistics. Uh, where are you getting these references from? from? Wow. Uh, well, I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to three great references. I'm going to go back to Linda Harvey. I'm okay. going to go back to Mary Govoni and Leslie Canham, who I think are probably the three top, um, infection control queens um, on the planet. So I'm going to pay attention to what they have to say. Here's the reality, and I don't know why or where the question came up, and I, I'll kind of mention it in a different context. So Debbie Carr, C-A-R-R, -R, is a HIPAA compliance consultant, and it amazes me how many doctors are not HIPAA compliance in terms of how they work with their computers, their technology. Some doctors don't know their servers are supposed to be in a locked closet or in a locked cage. That's a requirement. They don't know that. Sometimes, Debbie Carr is a HIPAA officer and Linda Harvey is an OSHA compliance consultant. And sometimes those are people you don't want to hear from because you don't want to hear what they have to say. Yeah. Listen. Yeah to what they have to say. So an example is I have a friend whose husband is a dentist and he doesn't want to bring Debbie Carr into his office because he doesn't want to hear what she has to say. And there was a woman who did a testimonial about Debbie um, Carr last week. They were um, ransomed, they were, they were um, hacked into 
and it has cost them so far, it has cost them $90,000 to get their, soft, their, their stuff back. So these are people in terms of the safe distancing protocols and the PPE um, supplies that we have to buy. Uh, Linda Harvey just told us about two evacuation systems for hygiene. I, I may not want to spend the money, but I need to spend the money. I may not want to hear what I, I may not want to hear safe distancing, but I need to honor that. And I need to honor what my team is going to be comfortable with. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, Janice Hurley uh, typed over in the chat column, oops, that wasn't me saying for them to volunteer. If oh. they're working, it's administrative time paid. Ah. Sorry, Deborah, but you quoted me correctly on everything else she said. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, you know, that's interesting that she would bring that up. Thank you, Janice, uh, my beautiful friend, um, and one smart woman. Um, in our office, and you have to have this in place, and if you don't have this in place let, yet, you should. In our office, we have what we call an administrative pay, um, so that if my hygienists aren't seeing hygiene patients, if they're doing something, if they're, do, if they're in a training protocol, or if they're in a training meeting, then they are paid, and it's called a different rate of pay, because they're not doing the similar job that they would normally do. Mm -hmm. And that is legitimate. I know that there is another consultant who's telling doctors to cut their staff, ask their, sta their staff to cut their salaries by 10 to 15% when they come back. And I would not recommend that. But I would recommend that, that you implement an administrative pay when they are doing um, tasks that are not related to their normal work. And I'm sure that's, uh, Janice, you can go back and confirm that's what you meant. Okay. Uh, and Janice asks about restroom monitoring. Are we asking our team members to clean the restroom each time it's used? Yes. Okay. So what, what we have, um, you know, it's interesting um, that our, we've been having trouble with our, the lock in our restroom. It has a tendency of patients, somehow when they leave the restroom, they, they lock it. And so we always have a key because so many times another patient will, want to go use the restroom and it's locked because the patient who left inadvertently locked it. And so we have a key. So when we spoke with Linda Harvey about this, um, we, she said, yes, you are go probably going to have to have your restrooms locked and you're going to have to let patients in. So when you can let them know is that, um, that you know, we have sanitized this room prior to your, to your um, use. Yeah, that has been sanitized after the last patient. If you keep it unlocked. Now, I can't monitor the hallway, which is a public restroom, because we, we are in a building and we share that room. We share that restroom. I'm not going to go monitor the hallway, but for the private restrooms in our office, yes. And um, here's something that I will say, and I'm going to say this um, lovingly and try not to sound like I'm scolding. Here's what I always tell my team. I will never ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. If it requires that I, um, as, as a, one of the team members, needs to sterilize the restroom after every patient, then that's what I will do. Um, it's a matter of fact protocol. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't, you know, some of the things my teams do and some of the things my hygienists get their, little, their hands on, I wouldn't want to touch that, but I can go clean. A, I mean, I can go clean a uh, a, a restroom after a patient. I'd rather do that than clean the staff refrigerator. It's got stuff going in it. <laughs> but I do that if I have to. But staff refrigerators are nasty. Should we have cleaned that refrigerator before we left on March? Oh, 20th? I don't. Yeah, you could probably have penicillin. Make pe penicillin at home now. All right. If, if you didn't. We, that's one of the first things we did. And all the, you know, left the snack stuff and everything, we, I said, take it home, take, take everything home, donate this, do whatever, but it, it got, it got swiped. Okay. Uh, what else should be on the sanitation station behind, besides hand sanitizers? Uh, masks, gloves. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, you may, again, if I, if I adopt what my physician did, they had uh, paper towels, they had or, um, the individual towels, which are not the same towels that we have in our patient restroom. 
I got to say one quick thing. Some of you have those old scratchy industrial towels in, in your patient restroom. Go to a linen-like towel that's much, much nicer. But for this, for this protocol, I would use kind of the industrial type of one sheet paper towel. So if the patient wants to use it to, to, uh, to depart, then I would make sure that I would have a trash can outside um, the door so they can dispose of their uh, paper towels in the, in the trash can. Okay. And a sign. You know about you know please help yourself and probably our preferred protocol of of what they do and how they what they how they take care of the materials or the or the um, supplies at that station, like one one mask per person so they're not going oh masks, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, somebody asks about Aluma Track. Do you know anything? I, I does that ring a bell? I've heard of it, but I can't, I can't speak to it. Um, don't know what that is. No, I, I'm not going to, I claim naivete. Okay. Uh, how long do you think we can function in dentistry with the social distancing? Well, my team's going to have a hard time not hugging each other the moment they see one another. Um, uh, how long can we function? Um, as long as we have to. I, I think it's amazing how, how I, I, have to, I the human body and the human pe people um, are amazing. And I think about this, and I, I'll just be brief about this. You know, for those of you who know that in 2011, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and I had to have a craniotomy. I was told I might never walk again. And um, I had lost the entire use of my right side. And um, I had to go through rehabilitation. And some people think it was for alcohol, but it was really to to gain my faculties back. And I had to learn to, uh, to use my, my right side. I had to learn how to walk all over again. Um, and they said it would take me three to five weeks. And I, I learned in 11 days. And I walked out of rehab without a cane, without a walker, without a wheelchair. I walked out in 11 days. It's amazing when we persevere, um, how we can adapt. Um, if you think about our world and you think about our, and they talk about when they remove a, 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 some type of animal a, a, away from nature, how the world adapts to it. And then when they put the put it back in, how they adapt back. We are very adaptable people. We'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read this, even though it's not in the Q and A, it's in the chat. Uh, it's a question. Ask her if her husband is really that bad at home. And that's from a Dr. Ross Nash. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Uh, he's a good, he's a great, he's learning to become a great sous chef and he does, he cleans up the kitchen pretty well. Okay. Um, somebody, uh, an employee that's feeling um, out of touch uh, uh, with her, her employer because they haven't contacted her since they shut down four weeks ago. Uh, and uh, just they would like to forward this information. I, I think we could uh, say, you know, direct your doctors to the uh, YouTube of this webinar after. But yeah, that's frustrating. Any thoughts there? Well, yeah. I mean, I think they um, sometimes, um, you know, they say um, I, there's, a, uh, there's a great speaker, and I won't quote everything he has to say, but one of these says, if you, if you want love, give love. If, you know, um, so if you want, uh, if you want attention, you know, the doc, your, your doctor could be home thinking the same thing. Gee, I haven't heard from my team for four weeks. No, but my team hasn't reached out to me since I've been home. So how about you being the one to reach out? How about you being the one to say, hey, doc, I miss you. I haven't heard from you in four damn weeks. But no, I mean, so say, hey, I haven't heard from you in four weeks. And, and I'm, I care about you. I wonder how you are. Um, so so be, how about being the one to reach out and say, you know, I'm, I miss you. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. So I, I'd ask. Yeah. Um, are staff being paid to come into the office to make care calls or other while they are on unemployment? Well, I think we asked, answered that question. Yeah. Um, again, I think that, you know, that um, uh, administrative pay might be, it depends on, again, Here's the quick question, or the, the, the question, and, and I think that's gonna have to be individual. If a team is gonna come in for 20 minutes, do, does he or she clock in? If they're coming in for two hours, um, uh, that, that's gonna have to be, I mean, I think that I would ask my team, and, and we have asked our team, because we, we have a couple of team members who have come in and they've checked the mail or they've checked uh, messages. 
So the question is, how do you want to be compensated for that? So ask your team, how would you like to be compensated for that? Do you want to clock in um, at your regular rate of pay? Um, you want to be much, do you want to clump that up so that you, you're spending two hours a week there and you clump that into one lump sum um, to make it easier for you to report for your, on your unemployment, for easier for us to pay you? I mean, do I write you a check for $2.22? What I'd ask the team, how do you want me to handle this? Handle it though. Don't, don't assume that it's, a, don't expect, don't assume. Ooh, I pointed. Janice, I'm sorry. Uh, I was, th those are jazz hands. I'm doing jazz hands. Um, don't assume that it's okay. Ask what they expect. Okay. Uh, should we put up plexiglass at the front desk to protect the girls in front? Yes. Or some, we talked about this, some sort of barrier. If you're not going to put up temporary, temporary glass or temporary plexiglass, and I understand you can go to you know, a glass store, something they're probably bombarded right now. If you go to the grocery stores now, right? There's the, there's the plexiglass barrier between you and the, and the checkout. By the way, he does do good at the grocery store. Um, um, but um, so temporary, a temporary plexiglass, or if you're not gonna do that, then you have to have something that's gonna put a barrier, a six foot barrier between the front desk and you. So it could be a desk. It could be um, chairs, something that keeps the patient from walking right up and being right in the face of the, of the person at the front desk. Here's something else to think about. Um, and this is one of the things our, our team, our team is amazingly cross-trained, but it doesn't mean that they can go check a patient out. So just because I can, doesn't mean I will or that I can, that I, I doesn't mean I, I'm capable of doing it but I can no longer leave my operatory and come back to the front desk and check my own patient out. There's gonna to have to be the red zone, which means I can't leave here. I'm in my hazmat mm -hmm. suit and I can't come up to the front desk. I can't, I can't do that anymore. Um, I can't write up my charts at the front desk. So there's gonna to have to be physical. We've talked about that. We have three workstations, but we probably can only use two at a time be, um, if we're gonna use two at a time. So, the team's gonna to have to stay in place in the operatory. So, so yes, the answer is there's gonna to have to be a barrier somehow, whether it be a plexiglass piece or some sort of table or something that's gonna prevent the patient from coming right to the front desk. Uh, when will it be okay to call patients about outstanding balances again? Well, um, I think you can call, I, I wouldn't call them about, if I'm going to call about standing balances, it's going to be, I'm going to call them with good news. So it might be, I might say, um, Timmy, this is Deborah from Dr. Nash's office. I'm, I'm, um, we, we are doing our very best to be business as usual as much as we can, which includes that we are, as a courtesy to our patients, we are going to um, keep you apprised and um, abreast of what your, um, op, your balance is in the office. Um, with any additional payments that have come through since the office has been closed. Um, one of the things though, that we've actually have some exciting news for some of our patients without setting balances, because we have some new resources that we didn't have before this all started that might be of interest for, um, uh, for you in order how you could take care of your balance uh, sooner. Um, and this might be where I really talk to the patients about um, how they can uh, convert that into outside financing through someone else, um, how we establish new payment plan. So here might be one of the, the nice things that I could do. I could call up and say, Timmy, I noticed that, that we have an outstanding balance that we've been working with for quite some time. And I want to go back and confirm the arrangements that we have previously made and, and to determine if that will still work for you. Now, I, in my mind, I could be saying, because they haven't been working for you lately. But um, I want to say, I want to, I want to verify that the arrangements that we had previously made um, still work for you, will still work for you. Um, and that, that, for me, rather than saying I'm calling about your overdue balance, I'm calling to see if the, that the arrangements we had previously made um, are still viable for you at this time. Yeah, I, I just find it uh, funny that uh, as dentists, we're, we're thinking about, okay, this is a good time to reduce those accounts receivable. Whereas we're asking our landlords to uh -huh. you know, put off our rent. We're asking for deferment on our bank loans and that. And so. Uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I think it's a, once again, I call it a care call. It's a care call. You know, I mean, you, know you, you had a, a, a agreed to this 
is that going to still be viable for you? Um, and again, I think how many of you think that your that your um, your banker or your credit card company are heroes because they said we understand that we might need to defer this for you, um, and so be their hero and say I understand that this might not be the time for you to be able to pay as agreed. Let's talk about how you want to defer that. That would be the call I would make, not I wouldn't be calling the, and, being, and being snarky. This is not the time to be snarky. Uh, back to Luma Track, uh, John Porter writes, it's an in-office payment subscription plan oh. used for patients to pay monthly for basic services. Go to pattersonlumatrack.com. There you go. Uh, I guess Mr. Porter might work for Patterson. Or he... Well, what a great resource. Oh, okay. um, Thank you. That's great information. Thank you. Yeah. And Patterson uh, Dental is sponsoring these webinars. There you go. Uh, we appreciate that if you're on uh, there. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, what pre-screening questions should we be asking? Oh, my. Um, I would go, um, again, I am not the expert, but if you go to, if you could go online anywhere and get what those pre-screening questions are about their about their health. And then, you know, I mean, I remember some of the initial questions we asked was, have you been outside of the country? Um, you know, have you, and we, we take their temperature. But if you go to Revenue Well, or you go to Solution Reach, or you go to Demand Force, or you go to, um, if you go to anybody on, on today's, if you Google it at all, you will get a number of pre-screening questionnaires and go with the one that you're most comfortable with. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Here's once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the great news. In the old days, you might've had to write your own pre-screening questionnaire. <laughs> you are gonna be thrown hundreds of pre-screening questionnaires. Go online, find the one that suits you. We happen to be, we, because we use Revenue Well and work with Revenue Well, Revenue Well has their own template um, of pre-screening questions that we can email to the patients prior to their arrival. The other thing that we can do, if you already know what your patient's uh, balance will be, typically, again, there might be some um, alterations in the treatment plan, but if you typically know that the hygiene appointment's gonna be $258 or whatever you, what your fee might be, I may call the patient and say, um, hi, Timmy, this is Deborah from Dr. Nash's office. Oh my God, I'm so excited that we get to see you tomorrow. Um, I want to make sure that we minimize your time while you are in our care, not because we don't love you, but we know that, you know, we want to keep you safe. We want to keep you healthy. And we are, we are practicing physical distancing with our patients. So I want to go ahead and take this opportunity to, um, you know, you, you're scheduled tomorrow for um, your cleaning and your examination and your radiographs. It's time for that to do that. We're also going to be doing your oral cancer screening exam tomorrow. So um, your fee tomorrow will be $258, and I can go and take care of that now so you don't have to stop at the desk or you don't have to linger in our office for any period of time. Terrific. Um, so would, uh, with the pre-screening questions, would you use, you know, with the text reminders and the uh, email reminders also sending those out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, not necessarily as much as text reminders. If I'm going to send a text reminder, I would hope, because um, I don't know how much information you can put in a text and how many yeah. if people can answer it, but you could in your text reminder, you can, you can say, please be certain that you have completed the pre-health, the health screening questions prior to your visit. So okay. that would be my text reminder. Terrific. Okay, uh, once again, the uh, recording of this will go up on YouTube within the next day or so. Uh, it takes us a while to uh, uh, convert the audio and the video, and that will be on YouTube at Washington Academy of General Dentistry. Um, question, should you bill D999 for every visit? Are you going to be using your uh, PPEs at every visit? I would guess so. Then I think the answer is yes. I mean, unless you're going to put, I remember the, in, in the, the, there were days in uh, nail salons um, that you would say, oh, this is your nail file and this is, your, this is all your stuff and we're going to put it in the Ziploc bag and we're going to put your name on it and there's an initial $2 charge and we're going to keep it. No, you're not going to do that. So if you're going to use all of that, all of those, um, the, those protocols at every visit, yes, there would be a charge at every visit. We give a lot of dentist, a lot of stuff away in our dental offices, don't we? A yeah, lot, we, we, we do. 
and we get embarrassed about charging for the services that we do. So we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. um, so, very guilty of this, and he knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's why in my office I do not handle any of the finances. No. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you want patients to wear masks and gloves in the waiting room if they're comfortable? Think about the grocery store. Um, when I go to the grocery store, there are some people wearing masks and some not wearing masks. Um, 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 gloves are not, according to Linda Harvey, gloves are not required. If, if the patient wants to put a mask on, then they can. Um, when I went to my doctor's office, although they had me put a mask on, uh, the person at the front desk was not wearing a mask. They took me right back to my, to my um, treatment room, my treatment area. Uh, so um, once again, um, I'm not the expert, uh, Linda Har and I'm, so I'm going. I'm calling upon my experts. I'm channeling my experts um, to do that. So uh, Linda Harvey mentioned that she had one person, and the, all they were offering were size large gloves, and they were asking the patients to wear them at all times, and they couldn't. Patient couldn't manu could, could not manu maneuver. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, but and then we also talk about uh, when we were talking this morning about is your receptionist going to wear a mask? Um, is she going to wear a shield? Um, how is she going to sound or he shout, he sound on the telephone if they're wearing a mask or a, a shield? Yeah. Um, so you're going to have to work those things through in your office. What is your comfort in the, in your office based on the guidelines? And I think somebody, um, oh, I think it might've been, and I, I think it might've been my friend Janice who talked about, we're going to do when we talk to our team, um, and Janice, correct my, my languaging if I'm incorrect, but she said something to the effect of, we are going to do everything that we know we can that's feasible. We're not going to make any rash decisions at this time, but we're, for now, we're going to do everything we can that is rational and feasible to keep everyone safe. I mean, someone was talking about um, these air filters that cost $3,000 per operatory, and the recommendation is don't go out and buy one yet. I mean, don't go rush out and buy one. Some people would say we need to rush out and buy one. I have a client in Oregon and she and her husband built permanent plexiglass barriers for their reception room. Mm -hmm. She said, what happens if someday that we no longer require those? Do you remember the days when we had the little glass and we opened the little door and we peeked out and we closed the door? Are we going to go back to that forever? I don't think so. So don't do anything rash. Do what is reasonable and what is what is safe and what is right. Okay, well, we're pretty well at two hours here. Uh, there, you know, there's uh, some more comments. A lot of frustration out there. Lots. What this is going to mean to dentistry. Um, uh, one of your team members uh, mentions uh, the systems you guys are looking at. Evacuation systems are Newbird ev evacuation system and PureVac. Yes, so, from Densply. Okay. Call Densply. Okay. PureVac, yeah. And yeah, we just ordered those. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you covered a lot. Uh, what do you think you want to come back and talk to us about again in the future? Man, what do you want me to talk about? I mean, I'd love to talk about how to talk to patients. I mean, that's going to be, um, that's going to be so important, what, what we say and what we do. And I mean, teamwork is going to be, um, going to be critical. I mean, you, you might be smarter than me, for those of you listening, but you're not as smart as my whole team. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't do this without them. And I, I'm, not, I'm talking, I have numbers of teams. I might, the team at work, they are incredible. We, so resourceful, so helpful. They care about each other. They care about, we, we really truly care about one another. And, it's, and it shows. And you know what's really important? Because we do and because it shows, our patients are very aware of that. And they will see that. I said something to somebody in the grocery store the other day. I had my mask on. I wore a mask. And I said, I'm smiling at you. And you probably can't even see it. And she said, but I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, it definitely. So I think that's, um, so we could talk about languaging. We could talk about how to talk to patients. We could talk about teamwork. We could talk, oh, we did mention key, key performance indicators. What should I really be monitoring? So some of you aren't monitoring all the numbers you should be. You're monitoring the basics and you're not getting down into what really matters. So we could talk about that. Okay, sounds me. good. Yeah, hey, uh, we've got your email address up there. Thank you for doing that. That's very kind of you to, to share that. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to have you stop sharing your screen. We're just going to bring up uh, our list of other webinars that are going to come up. 
Uh, thank you very much for, you know, reaching out to, to us and, and offering your services. That's very kind of you and your husband. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you've been a, a great friend to the Academy of General Dentistry, and we appreciate it. So thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. All righty. We're just going to share uh, upcoming uh, webinars that are available uh, here at the Washington Academy of General Dentistry Stay Home, Stay Healthy CE series. Uh, as always, these CE events uh, are free. Um, we'd uh, like to thank the University of Washington School of Dentistry Continuing Education for providing those CE credits. Comet USA, Patterson uh, for helping us out. Thank you to uh, all uh, our friends in Canada, the Canadian Academy of Restorative Dentistry and Prostodontics, our local dental society, Seattle King County Dental Society, Pierce County Dental Society, and Snohomish County Dental Society. Your CE credit should be emailed within a, a few days to you at the email address you uh, registered at. Take a look, we've got some upcoming webinars here and you can see ones that have occurred in the past couple of days. Those webinars are available at YouTube at Washington Academy of General Dentistry. Uh, Janice Hurley uh, commented a couple of times today and uh, a, her webinar should be up and running on there. Uh, for you, those of you that didn't get to see Dr. Suleiman's bleaching lecture, absolutely fantastic. Uh, he did a great job. Uh, one of the best bleaching lectures I've ever seen. So QR codes, use those. If those QR codes aren't working, www.washingtonagd.org. Please go to Facebook. Look at the Washington Academy of General Dentistry Facebook page. Please share that among your colleagues. Your staff members can watch uh, these courses and get CE credit as well. We're doing our best to figure out um, what webinars uh, uh, people want to see. If you have some ideas you know, when you're on these webinars, please feel free to type them in the chat uh, box there. Uh, hey, our next webinar is coming up in 27 minutes. Uh, Michael Giardino, uh, we've got over a thousand people scheduled. He's going to update us on the periodontal classification system. So he's a grad perio student uh, at the University of Washington, and uh, it's a good breakdown of uh, a confusing system. So he does a good job walking us through that. That's one you want to uh, watch if you're a hygienist uh, or front desk that's doing coding. Um, again, from the Washington Academy of General Dentistry, we'd like to say stay home, stay healthy, and please enjoy this free CE being brought to you by us and our co-sponsors. Valerie, I think we're good to log off, please. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, it was Thank a pleasure. You, yeah, anytime you want to schedule the next one, let me know. Thank you. Okay.